We are back in the Coxcomb Basin Wildlife Sanctuary in Belize, the first protected area specifically set aside for jaguars and managed by the Belize Audubon Society. In previous videos, we put attention on some specific and special jaguar individuals. However, Coxcomb is home to four more cat species. Next to the jaguar, there's the other big cat, which they call in Belize the red tiger better known in the rest of the world as the puma, cougar or mountain lion. For the small cats we have the smaller cousin of the puma, the jaguarundi, the agile and arboreal margay, and the largest of the small cats in the neotropics, the ocelot. Our story today will be about some important individuals of this species. While we have a lot of trouble distinguishing individuals of the plain colored puma and the rarely detected jaguarundi, the ocelot has highly distinguishable markings, just like the jaguar. We will now have a closer look at the area where we gathered most of our information for our two previous videos on Ben the Jaguar and the Old Matriarch, and we will look at the ocelots that live in this area. This area extends from the foothills of the mountains where two large streams come together to make the Stan Creek River all the way to the visitor center of the park. We detected a minimum of 15 individuals within a year in this area, but for most we only had one or two detections with limited information in subsequent years. They were either dispersers or individuals on exploratory trips. Four individuals stood out in this area with long records of residency and high numbers of detections, two males and two females. Let's start with the oldest male. Similar as with jaguars, ocelot males do not help with the raising of offspring, with females being the sole providers. The first male is M113 and our naming system for ocelots is similar as for jaguars, meaning he was first detected in 2011 and thus is a minimum of six to seven years old in these videos. M113 was detected in the area between the gate of the park to the visitor center up to seven kilometers beyond. You can see that he made a few excursions deeper into the park close to the foothills where the two larger streams meet. He was consistently detected in this area here showing off his agility by easily jumping across the undergrowth line near the tree holding our camera trap. He walked the trails here doing what all male cats do, patrolling the area and scent marking with urine to try and get the attention of females. The more a male marks, the more a female perceives this male to be the dominant one in the area. He was last detected in 2017 and likely perished in the next years. M113 showed perfect overlap in his lifetime locations with a similarly aged female, F118, equally first detected in 2011. Here you can see that she overlapped completely with M113, even making a single excursion further into the park at the same location as M113. Although it is highly likely that the two associated and potentially had offspring, we did not get any confirmation of detections together, confirming that they actually met. There is not much known about the breeding success of F118. We did note her with a small cub in 2016, but subsequent detections of her just after this event always showed her alone, possibly indicating that the cub did not make it. We did get some photos indicating that she was a good hunter, here showing her with a common opossum in her mouth, and a smaller mouse species. The fact that she transports kills might mean that she carried them to a den. F118 disappeared around the same time as M113, with her last detections in 2017. For the next male, M12-1, I start out with a happier message. Our latest records show that he's still around and healthy, as this photo from June 2023 shows. A big male, first detected in 2012, 
he boarded the territory of M113 and F118. As you can see, there is minimal overlap between the two, with equally minimal excursions of M121 into the territory of the other male. M121 was detected very frequently in this area, walking the trails, consistently marking, spraying the vegetation, sniffing the ground to detect countermarks of rival males or to alert him to the presence of females, while making sure his own spray marks are the domineering smell for females to detect. M121 was detected on several occasions in close proximity to our last individual of interest, a female first detected in 2013, F132. Although there were no photographs of the two together, on several occasions both were detected at the same location with just minutes apart, indicating they must have met. Here we equally provide the happy message that they likely still occasionally meet, as F-132 was equally recently detected and in good condition. We also have good evidence of the breeding success of F-132, as she can be seen here walking with a female cub. The lifetime range of F-132 overlaps completely with that of M-121, confined to the foothills by the large river split. It would therefore not be a surprise if he were the father. The cup seems already quite independent and big, having passed the vulnerable stage of the first five to six months. It could even be the case that the juvenile female cub is about to disperse. Here you can see that F-132 spray marks, which might show she's going to be receptive soon and wants to advertise her presence. Something that would be unlikely if she still had to look after younger, vulnerable cubs. For one, she would likely not be receptive at this stage, and second, she would definitely not want to put attention on her vulnerable offspring in tow by attracting unknown males. Her motivation to mark in the open can be clearly seen here. She is defecating in this prominent spot right next to the trail, likely a known marking spot, an ocelot latrine, while her cub is still present. The young female will likely gradually move away from her mother, practicing her hunting skills, becoming more independent. Here you can see that her attention is drawn by a squirrel in the tree further along the trail, but she recognizes that this is not a viable opportunity. In this same period, F-132 still seems to make sure the young female is doing okay, as F-132 can be heard here calling her. Both M-121 and F-132 are old ocelots now, being at least 12 and 11 years old respectively, which is very old for wildcats. We know that F-132 did well with her female cub, as she reached adulthood and settled in the vacant area of F-118 closer to the visitor center, setting up her own territory where she is still detected today. She even had a cub in 2022, making F-132 a grandmother. This young granddaughter reached adulthood as well and dispersed successfully, being equally detected this year on her own. This makes F-132 a true matriarch of Coxcomb. A small matriarch, but a matriarch nonetheless.